Charlie Hebdo is a French satirical weekly newspaper. It mocks everything, including religions, Catholicism, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism. On the 3rd of November, 2011, the cover of Charlie Hebdo read, 100 lashes if you don't die of laughter, paired with a cartoon of Muhammad. Three years later, on the 7th of January, 2015, two French Muslim brothers forced their way into the offices of Charlie Hebdo in Paris. They killed 12 people and injured 11 others. Now, these brothers seem to have believed that depicting Allah in an image is sacrilegious and mocking him in a cartoon is blasphemous, punishable by death. Many, however, feel that there is nothing so sacred that we shouldn't be able to make a joke about it. So what do you think? Are there some things too serious to be the butt of a joke? On the 9th of November, 2016, many supporters of Donald Trump began sharing this and similar tweets. There were many different versions, but most went along the lines of, Donald Trump grabbed that election by the pussy. This, of course, is satirizing the extremely vulgar comments Trump made while talking to television personality Billy Bush of Access Hollywood on the set of Days of Our Lives, where Trump was making a cameo appearance. Trump said, yeah, that's her with the gold. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful... I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Billy Bush said, whatever you want. In response, Trump said, grab him by the pussy. You can do anything. Now, a friend of Real Talk told us that her father shared this tweet. And of course, she was shocked to see this. She sent him a message saying, you know, I'm a victim of sexual assault. How could you tweet something like this? To which her father responded, calm down, honey. It's only a joke. Many people argue that rape jokes are fine. They're only jokes. They're not hurting anyone. The comedians who make rape jokes clearly don't condone or perpetrate rape. Those who are offended obviously don't have a sense of humor. They're opinionated, sensitive, and dramatic. But researchers have found that there is a correlation between rape proclivity and sexist jokes. Now, quickly, a uh, definition of the word rape proclivity. So this is a self-reported measurement reflecting normally a man's likelihood to commit rape or willingness to rape a woman, assuming he wouldn't be caught. Self-reported statistic, rape proclivity. So in a 2013 study conducted by Manuela Tome and Vicky Tendai, they argue if a person holds hostile sexist attitudes, then exposure to sexist jokes may create a situation which not only enhances tolerance of discrimination against women, but also appears to evaluate, to elevate the propensity to commit rape. Tome and Tendai discourage jokes that discriminate against women, saying that, quote, they can create a circle of hostility and discrimination that culminates in violence against outgroup members. In this study, Tome and Tendai used the following joke. Why are women like carpets? If you lay them properly the first time, you can walk all over them for years. Why do women have small feet? So they can get closer to the sink. How many women does it take to change a light bulb? None. Let her do the dishes in the dark. What's the best thing about a blowjob? 10 minutes silence. If we turn to college campuses, we can see real life examples of the correlation between inappropriate rape humor and heightened occurrence of sexual assault. In 2012, CNN presented a video of Yale fraternity pledges chanting, no means yes, yes means anal, no means yes, yes means anal, on campuses outside female freshman dorm rooms. Now, this was likely only a joke, but statistics show that fraternity members are much more likely than other college men 
to commit rape. At St. Mary's University, fraternity brothers gleefully decreed, SMU boys, we like them young. Y is for your sister. O is for oh so tight. U is for underage. N is for no consent. G is for grab that ass. These chants do not only exemplify the apathetic attitude these young men have towards non-consensual sex, but the communal chants also spread this apathy amongst other group members. It's likely that many of these men would not have chanted these words if they were on their own, but they were persuaded by their fellow pledges. The power of peer pressure is real. Even some female students can be seen participating in these chants. Here is a freshman caught on tape singing an offensive chant that promotes rape and underage sex at Frosh, that is, Orientation Week, in St. Mary's University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. This video was briefly posted on Instagram before it was taken down and discovered by the Canadian media. Jokes have real power. They're used in therapeutic settings to de-escalate the intensity of an experience or of a memory. But maybe there are some experiences, some memories that should just stay escalated. One example of such a topic is the Holocaust. Is this not something we should consider too serious to deflate with humor? Why didn't the Jews in Germany fight against the Nazis? There was too little interest. If the role of humor is to deflate the severity of an experience, then making jokes about the Holocaust expresses that the teller of the joke considers the Holocaust to have been ultimately inconsequential. And remember, laughter is contagious. By telling a rape joke or a Holocaust joke, we might be spreading the mindset that these things shouldn't be taken seriously. Israeli friends of Real Talk agree. Holocaust jokes are dangerous, but many also maintain that there is one group of people who are certainly allowed to tell Holocaust jokes, who need to tell Holocaust jokes. Jews. Just as victims of sexual assault can find it extremely therapeutic to tell jokes about their experience, many Israelis find it therapeutic to tell jokes about the Holocaust, to lighten the burden to overcome the PTSD, to deflate the severity of the memory of the experience that defines their culture and the Israeli nationality. So the belief then is that Jewish people need Holocaust jokes to deflate the seriousness of the Holocaust in order to survive, in order to carry on with their day. But non-Jewish people need to remember the severity of the Holocaust in order to ensure that it never happens again and therefore cannot deflate it with a joke. Just as survivors of sexual assault maybe say that survivors of sexual assault are allowed to make jokes about sexual assault, but people who have not experienced sexual assault, particularly men, are probably best not making jokes about sexual assault. So perhaps it's too simple to merely say that these sorts of jokes are off limits or dangerous or unethical. Perhaps the morality of a joke is actually dependent on context. Perhaps, like many tools, jokes can be used for good or jokes can be used for evil. Or maybe you disagree entirely. Uh, maybe you believe that all sexist and otherwise politically incorrect jokes are unethical, regardless of who's telling them. Or maybe you believe that there's nothing too serious not to be made fun of. That's for you to decide.